Welcome guys, three bold takes again. Um, and in this video, we're going to discuss uh, the biggest non-con games of 2024. We've got a lot of them this year. Uh, it seems like in here, a recent memory of the last four or five years, the non-con games have, have taken an uptick in um, their popularity in scheduling other um, Power 4 opponents, quality opponents, which we love to see as fans. We don't like, you know, the cupcakes every single time you have a game that is not... Uh, a conference opponent, um, a.k.a. Uh, Michigan. Uh, this is the first year, I think, in three that they've played a Power 4 team uh, in the non-con. And uh, guess who they have? Texas. Wow. What a game. I think that's week two. Is that a week two game where um, Texas goes to the big house? Um, talk about a smack in the face here for Michigan early on in the year uh, with a new head coach, Jerome Moore. What do you guys think about that one? Look, I love Texas and Michigan game at week two. Uh, my favorite game is about we play these uh, non-con games early in the year. I love, one, for the games to be on actual college campuses. I don't like the neutral site games. Two, I love getting to see programs that you never get to see play each other, play each other. So this Texas at Michigan game, this Notre Dame at Texas A&M game, both of those, those are my two favorite ones out of everything on this list. They give me everything I want. You never see Texas A&M versus Notre Dame. Will that game have a huge impact at the end of the year? Maybe not. Maybe it does. I, I doubt Texas A&M makes a super big run in the SEC this year. But you never get to see those programs play each other, and they're playing in Kyle Field. It's going to be a huge game, big atmosphere. It's what college football is about. In Texas, Michigan is the same way. Those, to me, I mean, looking at this whole list, top to bottom, are the most entertaining, too. I would feel that way about LSU-USC, but I hate that the game's in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. And But it's in the new it's in the new stadium in Vegas, right? Yeah, like, it's in the Raiders stadium. Okay. So, I mean, at least it'll be a cool stadium. But, yeah, I, I am a firm believer in um, on-campus uh, games for college football. That includes the playoffs. I think all games uh, up until the national championship game should be at uh, uh, college campuses. Well, I mean, with that game, like, put it in the Coliseum instead of the Legion Stadium and tell me it's not a more appealing game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um... I, I got to say, for me, I'm going to go a little off mark here. I really like the Tennessee-NC State game. And this is just me as a college football fan. NC State with a very stingy, or stingy a sturdy defense against uh, a, a rookie quarterback that is going to be supposedly the guy, the next guy, Heisman favorite from the time he, he hits the pros. And that's in week two for Tennessee. They're going to have a cupcake in week one against UT Chat. And then they get NC State, which is really going to be tough at NC State, which is even bigger. So I really like that game just because we're going to see what Nico's made of. I've heard when I, when I was up in Murfreesboro this, this entire summer, I think I've heard from millions of Tennessee fans how Nico, Emma LaVeya is going to be everything that Bryce Young and Tua and and Archie Manning and Quindy, all these guys combined, it's it's him right there. Apparently his pronouns are he, him. Uh, that is what I'm understanding. And so Nico's supposed to be that guy. Uh, NC State with a great defense as well. That's the one I'm most excited for on this list. But if you want to take one tick down on this graphic, if you're looking at it, Miami and Florida is not a bad one either. Definitely to open the season. We're not just opening it up with a little like kick around, let's have fun, let's get Let's loosen the irons a little bit and see what's happening with the team. You're going straight into it to a, a down uh, South Florida rivalry. Uh, that's going to be really fun to watch as well. I like that one. Let me get something off my chest real quick, though, about this list that I think is dumb. Why is Louisville and Kentucky on it? Not I, Nothing against the, the Governor's Cup, right? Like, it's a fun game, but it's played every single year. I right. know it's a non-con game. But it's not something special. Like, I know Louisville and Kentucky are going to play each other because they do it every single season. That would be like putting the the Florida State Florida game on here. It, I think I, I think it's more so the fact that, like, because of Louisville season last year played for the ACC championship, this could be the game that could knock Louisville down in the rankings, right, to where, you know, if they are in the top 12 and play for the ACC championship and lose a close one, 
they could stay in there, but if they lose to Kentucky and then lose in the in the championship game, like that's it. So I think it could have some meaning later on in the year. I mean, the game could definitely have meaning. I just don't. I don't know. It's not like a non-talk game that yeah, I mean, because it's one that I'm used to seeing. So I think right. it's a little weird to put it on there. It, it's like I don't get super hyped about Georgia Clemson either because it's not an uncommon non-talk. The two have played each other a lot over the years. It's the same thing with Tennessee and North Carolina State. That's why I didn't mention it as a game that I'm super excited about. The regionality makes it a common matchup. Yeah. And, and I think... And you, go ahead, Fred. No, no I, I was just going to say, so there's there's one that we haven't talked about, um, and that's Alabama at Wisconsin. I'm interested to see how, and, and I'm, I'm going to say it, uh, Wisconsin isn't a middle-of-the-road Big Ten team. They're on the higher end of that. They're probably top four or five traditionally uh, year over year in the Big Ten. So I'm curious to see how Alabama fares against a, an opponent that's, you know, they're used to playing the higher end Big Ten teams in the playoffs, bowl games, things like that. How is it going to be with the fourth or fifth best team in the Big Ten? I'm curious to see that compared to the fourth or fifth best team in the SEC, right, which this year could be Tennessee. Um, hopefully it's not Ole Miss, but it could very well be, um, or even like an Oklahoma coming in. So that's going to be an interesting to see. There's one game that's not on this list that I think is the most absurd game in all of college football in the non-con, and that involves Missouri traveling to UMass in October. It's not even like beginning of the year, in October. I, that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard and seen in my life. Yeah, I don't understand all these power four schools playing road games at these uh at these small G five locations. Like, I'm sorry, UMass doesn't move the needle. Why are you going on the road to play you play UMass? That's a bizarre Yeah, is there any that these group of fives also give money to bring them there? Now it is possible that they're doing like a one home, two road thing. That is a possibility because I think that's what Alabama and South Florida are doing when Alabama took that yep. road trip to USF last year. Mm -hmm. um, so that could be what it is, is that they're doing a two and one in which, you know, that's super beneficial for the small G5 schools, but it definitely makes for a weird, <laughs> uh, weird image to see. Like, cause yeah. imagine if it was a slightly bigger school, what if it was, I don't know, let's say Texas going on the road to play rice. Is that feel, that feel raw on so many levels, but, you know, I guess good for Rice. They'll get a bunch of Texas fans in their stadium for that game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Freddie, you bring up uh, a, a match of that's not on this list. Let me tell you, the most, even with this list here, the most important non-conference matchup. It's not on this list here. But this is life or death. This is to win the national championship or to not win the national championship. This has all the marbles in the bag and everything's going to be spilled out onto the table afterwards. We're going to see light and dark after this game's over. And that, guys, is the Colorado Buffaloes and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Genuinely, genuinely, here's how I'm watching this game. Colorado wins... Deion Sanders is doing something with his program upward trajectory. Matt Rule still has some some steps to take. Colorado loses. Nebraska wins. Deion Sanders is not doing so hot. Maybe we're looking at him in bifocals as a coach saying, are you coach material? And then saying, Nebraska national champions. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, you just you lost me there. You lost me there. I, I was tracking for a second, and then you lost me there. Look, if Colorado wins, I'm looking at it going, okay, Dion's got something going, and Matt Rule is exactly what I know that Nebraska Matt Rule is, which is fraudulent and not worth all the hype that they're getting. If Nebraska wins this game, good. You beat a team that's probably going to win four or five games. It doesn't mean that you're national championship material, but it means you've improved because you lost to them last year. So at least you're mm -hmm. growing uh, for whatever that's worth. But I take nothing away. It, 
this game is way more for Nebraska to lose than it is Colorado, which I think is interesting considering Colorado won the matchup last year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, I think the Colorado uh, North Dakota State game is a bigger game than that. Now that because, is crazy, but because if Colorado loses that game, you talk about fraudulent at an all-time level in Boulder. I feel like I feel like Freddie's rooting for North Dakota State. I am, dude. I I thousand oh, percent want North Dakota State to win uh, against Colorado. And, and people keep bringing that game. Dion Hater over here. Yeah, people keep bringing that game up, and we're talking week one, uh, a forty-two to seventeen blowout win for the Buffaloes. Like that's what we're talking about. Uh, no, we're not. So, no, we're not. They will not get blown out. I promise. Let's keep that. doubting them. Uh, Dion and Colorado are going to have that game in the back. You know, we're we're going to get to the first quarter. We're going to have a couple texts, a couple Twitter notifications. Oh my gosh, Colorado's suffering. It's not going to be true. What matters is the end score. Colorado's going to win that game handedly. I kind of agree. I think they pull away in the fourth quarter, win by at least three possessions. By the I don't say it, dude. I, I I just, I don't say it. <laughs> if they wouldn't have had a four and eight season, if they would have won six or seven games last season, we may have been talking about them in the playoff prediction video for myself. That's no. all I'm going to say. No. That's all no. I'm going to say. No. Maybe next year I'll be talking about him in our playoff predi- okay. prediction. All right, that's uh, that's where we're going to end it here because that's a little blasphemous there. Um, it's been uh, three bowl takes here, and we've talked about our uh, favorite non-con games of 2024. Uh, I'm Freddie. I'm joined by Chase and Quinn. Appreciate you guys sticking around. More videos coming soon. We are only a couple of weeks away from the college football season. Can you believe it? Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys later.